I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So with that, I'll call the regular meeting to order of the Osceola School Board of Education for Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. Um, I'll call roll call Brooke Oy. Here. Jan Carlson. Here. Corey Schmidt. Here. Tessa Martin. Here. And myself. Item D, persons who requested an audience with the board. The public meeting of the Osceola Board of Education is for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. This is not considered a public community meeting. There's time for public participation during the meeting during this time. Public comment will be recognized by the portion of the meeting and after acknowledgement by the chair. When called to speak, approach the podium, state your first and last name, your topic, and all, all remarks excuse me, should be addressed to the whole board, not any one specific person. Each comment will be allowed up to five minutes during the public comment portion. The board and administration listen, but may choose not to respond to public comment. We ask speakers and audience members to conduct themselves in a professional manner, which includes no waving or hand gesturing, no vocal interference, no disruption, ridicule, or other deliberate demonstrative behavior directed at others, the use of appropriate language, tone, and gestures. Failure to comply with these requests may result in being asked to leave the meeting. We have one person that has requested an audience with the board. That is Teresa Utsky. And I believe the topic says referendum budget. If you would use the podium. Thank you. Thank you, board, for all your service and all your time to dedicate to this. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I will, at the start of this, request once again that you please record your meetings and provide them to the public. So we greatly appreciate it. Regarding the information that was presented in the prior meeting, I would strongly encourage the new board to limit your survey to impacted taxpayers, people who live in our district, in our community, that are paying for this. The last time we went to survey, several Minnesota residents received surveys. Several people living in Hudson, in Somerset, in Richmond received surveys. As the vendor said, there's staff that lives outside the district, and there's an open and all people who, you know, are surveyed in the district. Um, I also have a real concern regarding the requesting extra codes without qualifying whether they're residents or not residents and whether or not those residents have voting age people that live in that residence. Please be mindful as you're trying to build a relationship with the community and encourage them to go one way or another. Items like that are really, really divisive and the people who are paying for this are the most impacted by it. I'm not saying that like we've got great teachers, we want to pray to provide a great learning environment, but when we look at taxpayer impact, which is a large portion of it, those are the people that we really should consider when we separate out the statistics on the report. Those weren't necessarily separated out when the research was presented to the community. Very, very important to do. Also, and I heard discussion, I'm glad you guys were being creative about it. Millrates, please make sure you investigate the most current millrate data before you present it to the community. Old data and impacted data as it rolls forward, it's very important when people have fixed budgets that they know what the impact is down the road and they're not surprised there's nothing worse than trying to encourage your community to sign up for something and not having current data and know what the true impact is going to be. Next, um, we can't consider a facilities piece. We, we spoke for almost two hours on a facilities piece without looking at it holistically. Your operating budget is extremely concerning. We haven't seen this published in several of the past school board meetings. With the projected views that we've seen, the three to five year projected views, in my mind, and I know you guys have heard this time and time again, there is never a day that bricks and mortar is going to trump our teachers. We have teachers.
features that you need to pay for your lights and you need to turn on. And then we look at facilities, features and curriculum are my primary concern. And if we're three million dollars in deficit, and we're going to be facing a massive staff reduction. We need to know that and we need to see those together and understand as taxpayers how we're going to support our teachers holistically with a facilities referendum. Because what we saw, I think it's been about six months ago, I could be wrong, and that's a living, breathing document based on state funding and a lot of other inputs. But we need to know what that impact's going to be. We need to know what the impact's going to be this year, two years from now, and three years from now, before you look at a 30-year referendum. Finally, and that, that just builds transparency for your public so nobody's caught by surprise. Finally, when you have a vendor come in here, be very, very concerned when they present debt at a AAA, what I'd consider Olympic level ratings, when our community couldn't make those ratings the last time around. We were at AA. That's like the minor league compared to the Olympics in the finance world. You are looking not just to apples to oranges. You're looking apples to giraffes. It's not even in the same league. And that is going to, when you go present this to the public, that's an enormous pitfall. If you're presenting finance rates that you're never going to get to. And then you're surprised by a massive debt increase because that interest rate is the primary driver of your taxpayer bill. I think that's five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so with that, that'll bring us to the consent agenda. I would like to note that I'm gonna pull the payment of the bills. Yeah. Uh, the bill list did not get uploaded. That's really angry. That's hard to my fault. No, this is my fault. I gave over so that would be striking item C. Uh, so then it would be approval of the consent agenda as proposed without item C. So I went to Green Bay in July and attended the WASD um, summer workshop. And for the first day, most of it had to do with AI, the artificial intelligence, and how it can help stimulate learning for students. And, that, and there's like four main um, companies that have it. 
but they're not licensed for for students under 18, oh. which um, is good and bad. But um, with that, though, there is a lot of demonstration that went on about like, so if you have a kid that's struggling with math, so he could put in his math problem and, and he can get it to solve it for him. And so they could do their whole assignment that way, but what happens on test day? Do they really know the information, right? There's conversations around that. And there were then conversations about how students can use it to write papers, like drafts or different versions of it by keep asking it questions and clarifying um, how the paper's written and things like that. Um, it's being used a lot in colleges, not so much in high school. But at the same time, if you had a student that was really interested in a subject, say physics, but it doesn't fit in their schedule, and they're really interested, they could like get on there and um, like, make a whole course of it and pass like an AP class. I mean, it's just amazing. It's a very valuable tool. And a lot of schools don't, I mean, they don't have it because it's not licensed for under 18. But the, cost, the subscription fees and that are high and the ongoing costs and all of that. Um, but there's concerns um, with data privacy and then of course policy, school policy, district, policies and then legal considerations so there's some of that that was that was a big part of the conference um, and then there was a social piece that I attended and it talked about like community communicating like through Facebook and some of the social media thing do the celebration part but don't use it as for information um, communicate the information piece separate um, but use it or showing what is going on in the schools, kids celebrating kids and everything like that. I teased Becky about maybe starting her own podcast. That came up. Um, <laughs> Who would subscribe? Jan, you would subscribe. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. You would be surprised. You would be surprised. But then, you know, in the evening, um, we had a dinner and Leroy Butler was there from he was a Green Bay Packer, so yeah. I'm not a football fan, so um, I, I didn't know really who he was. But he talked about his time in the NFL, but he also talked about how important family was and everything and how he overcame some of his own difficulties. I don't know if people knew this, but like he was in a wheelchair almost from birth to six or eight years old. He had problems with his feet. But his family was really um, in, I think it was in Jacksonville, but it's all, he was in a very poverty area. And so he, it was inspiring to hear how much his family, his mom helped him. But then when he connected with teachers and the impact that they had on his life and helped him create his path to be successful, go on into college because he has another disability. He was not a student you would think would go on to college and be successful, and let alone then play in the NFL. He also has a son, I think, I think it's a son that has autism. And so he's really pushing for um, this whole support for students and that stuff. So it was pretty cool. Question, um, what did they show for free? Um, Ooh. It was not chicken. It wasn't chicken. I was betting it was chicken. It's usually chicken. It was not chicken. Wow. And the other thing I have to tell you, um, so when we were there, it was also the National Jugglers Convention or something. It was just funny because everywhere you went, these people were juggling. <laughs> and it was everything. You couldn't even imagine. I just decided that's not in my future. But because um, we went up after the luncheon up in the upper thing and the convention, they they would be going 24 7. Or but they came from all over. It was like the different parts of the United States, but even different countries. So it was just happened to be in Green Bay that week. 
They were there like for a whole week, some changed the date. It's a whole thing. Yes, and they were on Eunice bikes. I mean, it was. Did you try to show up? I tried, but. Did you? Did you try to run the unicycle? No. I knew better. That would have been cool. So, no. Just a motorcycle. But, um, yeah, interesting. So, they're in Tennessee, I think, next year at the same time. So, if people want to, like, put your. Actually, it's Evansville, Indiana. Jim, what's it well attended? Not the jugglers. The jugglers went to. You know, that was free to everybody. You could go out and spend as much time on as little puppies as you want. You're not kidding. The amount of things they're trying in the air is ridiculous here. I make sure I was not in okay. photographs. <laughs> but the symposium, was it well attended? It was a small group, that's for sure. Um, there's a group, group from sure. Rice Lake there, and I think okay. those were the only ones, me and them were probably the only ones from the region. Um, but there are a lot of people from, of course, that yeah, side yeah. of the state because they sure. could. Um, but it, it was a good conference, met some new people, yeah, and yeah. had a lot of conversation. I wish that would have been down there, but I didn't So it was a fun couple days, long yeah. drive, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, you have, Wayne, you're up, student representative report. Do you want to juggle? Can you juggle? Can you juggle? You can. I tried really hard. Okay, so it's August, but there's not a lot going on, but I do have a couple things. Um, the open house is on the 22nd, and then freshman orientation is the 26th, and I have the beginning of both of the trainings, so that's going to be really fun. Um, and then school starts in 13 days, not that I'm sure. Oh. I am! <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we broke two weeks, I wanted to cry, but okay. Um, so that's it for academics. Um, for social, the high school marching band finished their summer schedule and they're preparing for the Osceola Parade, which was their last one. I'm sad because I like watching them as I take percussion. Um, and the Aquatic Center has been busy with swimming lessons, lap swim, open swim, water yoga, and lots more. They're also doing a football family day on the 23rd. That sounds pretty cool. Cooper's doing a really good job getting things out and letting the public see what's going on with that. So. Um, and then athletics, the American Baseball Coaches Association released their 23-24 team academic excellence award winners. And the boys baseball team is on this week's list. <laughs> Um, fall sports began practicing, some of them start Monday, but most of them have already started. And then football has its first scrimmage this Friday, it's something to think about. And then their first real game is next Friday. Um, the high school volleyball team did a youth camp last week. And then Bella Anderson and Bree Alt were the All-American team during the UC Youth Championships. And Bree's a freshman, so that's pretty cool. That's all I got. There wasn't a lot. So. You did good. Trying to pick three items in the jungle. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> tax. I'm the tax. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What are you looking forward to with Brown Year for you? Having all the clubs and everything, like not just the science, whatever, but I'm excited for FFA this year and all the things that can be brought to Brown for sure. And Yeah, I've toured a bunch this month, so I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I know I want to be a teacher, but that's me. What I want to teach, and then I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to know that. Right? <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for your update. For sure. All right, that leads us to item nine, which is engaging continuous improvement in student support systems and programs. Item A is approve the 24 25 budget for our budget hearing.
Kingdom, Heaven and Earth as I, a full good in it. That is approved. Item B is approved with 2425 school board meeting calendar. <coughs> Motion by Brooke Lesh. Second by Tessa Martin. Any further discussion? I'm sure that one is the other one that's on this screen. I go to the zoo and then you know. Or, or that place too. Is that their only options? I didn't mean with the family. I meant like the family <laughs> piece is what I was referring to. But <laughs> it's on camera. <laughs> just shut my foot in my mouth there. But that's not what I meant. I was trying to explain it. Failed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? No. I love my family. <laughs> Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed would be nay. That is approved. Item 10 is aligning, developing, and supporting our staff. A is our graduate work class work proposal and collaboration. Hi. Do we have to stand at the podium? Um, probably. That's probably the right. Or over there, either one works. You guys want to introduce yourself first? Yes. Uh, <coughs> My name is Lorraine Anderson. Hi. I am Clint Strump. I am Kayla Dimley. Uh, and we're here uh, because we are all currently participating in uh, our graduate program through the University of River Falls. And part of that program, um, instead of a thesis, is to conduct some passion projects. So um, we don't have a, an official name yet, uh, but this is our passion project proposal. And I have um, some handouts there for you if you would like to take notes on anything or think about any questions you might have at the end. Uh, so in the first couple weeks, which we've always already completed um, in our program, we did a lot of work. They have a wonderful format uh, where we are able to, I think, uh, take in and process and internalize a lot more information than I was expecting to be able to do the way that they're doing it. Um, and that involves um, a lot of restorative circles um, and um, in, in some different format, uh, ways that they engage all of us, but it's a really um, strong community building. And as we've done this work uh, with most avenues that we've worked in, I keep thinking, um, I'm, I'm a parent, I'm a taxpayer, I'm a teacher in the district, so I have many hats. Um, and. I've felt in the last handful of years um, a growing disconnect between how I feel in each of these roles about the district and, um, and how we're moving forward. Uh, and so as we went through this coursework, I just kept thinking, I wonder what could happen if we could do this with the community, with the district. I wonder what would happen if we could have conversations in an intentional and purposeful way and really listen to and hear um, how we want to move forward and um, and what that could do to benefit you really in the decision-making role. Um, so my proposal overall is that we um, use our core values um, to continue or to really put into practice um, our vision, um, instilling a passion for learning, developing responsible, productive citizens by partnering with students, families, staff, and the community. Um, so this really hits a lot on the innovation, adaptability, um, equity, collaboration, proud of compassion. It hits a lot, of, it hits a lot of things. Um, so that's, that's the nutshell proposal, and we'll tell you a little bit more. And a lot of it is not saying that anything's going wrong. I think we're, a lot of it is just the connection the bridge between the community and the school and having our school be the pride of, of our community. Mm -hmm. And not that it isn't, but we wanna make sure there's communication and collaboration between all the parties kind of in this open session forums, that all parties are included in that communication and that bridge so that we can put that on the top of our list of the pride of Osceola. Um, and so we have open sessions where it would be, for staff, it would be um, in service, where it would be fully optional if they wanted to attend a similar format to what we did um, in our master's program, um, some community building, um, and using the 
circle as everybody gets a voice, everyone's equal. There's not, and, and part of it is the intentional facilitation. We're not leading it. We're just there to guide the, the discussion um, and make sure we're following a certain, make sure your voice is heard, that we're stating facts, or, and, and bringing, it, bringing forth and having a, a common direction, where, what direction that group wants to take it, um, but just making sure we kind of facilitate that. We also wanted to hold two or three nights open to the community, parents, community members, and, and we're still working on how we can get the students involved. Um, but having an open time, and during that opening time of building the community, kind of saying, who came tonight? Is there a way we can separate where parents can all be in a room to have a discussion on how we could, you know, just in that. And the restorative circles and community building, we can go to the next slide. Uh, how we kind of wanted to do those meetings is through the six thinking hats. It's a short video, and maybe I can just do a quick summary. Six thinking hats is just elite, hats of leadership and how to go about a plan, a current situation, and it's parallel thinking towards certain plans or ideas or things like that. So you're all thinking in the different aspects of leadership. It's a minute and a half. Do you want me to take it? Sure. Corey, you ready for Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking is the ultimate human resource. In this book, Edward de Bono puts forward a simple process that allows a thinker or a group of thinkers to separate emotions from logic, creativity from information, and allow room for both the positive and the negative. It is called Six Thinking Hats. The process uses parallel thinking, which can be explained like this. Imagine a beautiful country house. One person is standing in front of the house, one is standing behind. Two other people are standing on each side of the house. All four have different views. All four are arguing that the view they are seeing is the correct view of the house. Now the group rejoins at the front of the house and everyone sees the same. They might still disagree if the house is orange or coral, but they are all looking in the same direction and the subject is fully explored. Parallel thinking ensures that everyone is heard and every opinion valued equally. It is not about arguing or trying to win, but about exploring every aspect. The six thinking hats each has an easy to remember color and each represents a certain type of thinking. Um, real quick, the white hat is just information, stating the facts and not allowing any um, biased opinion. Let the I, white hat was what I had. We all went to sections. White hat was. I noticed my neighbor returned from returned at twelve thirty a.m. from gambling all night. But that you made an assumption that they were gambling all night. Well, I know that they have a gambling problem. Well, what did you observe? What are the facts? My neighbor arrived at twelve thirty a.m. But we can't put the other things. And so white hat is just the stats, the, the facts of the problem, the situation, the question. Um, the red hat is emotions because those are valid and giving everybody a chance maybe you set a timer to voice <laughs> your opinions or you know your opinion not your opinions because that's other things but your emotions and how you're feeling on a certain thing black is finding weaknesses or have that skeptic the skeptics hat on it's kind of the skeptic finding the weaknesses in the plan and just focusing on that and then the opposite of that is the green no yellow hat and finding the positives in, in this current situation, because you can find the positives. Although you might have a problem to deal with, there are certain things you can focus on. And then green hat is kind of like with your growing, it's the creative time to throw out any ideas and just have a creative, creative outlook on a certain thing. And you go through all the hats and they're kind of the overall one is the blue hat and that manages all the other hats. And you look at it and say, I think we need to go back to the green hat and have some more ideas. Go to the black hat, what are some weaknesses in that plan? The yellow hat, and kind of manage the thinking, the parallel thinking where everybody's thinking through one hat and, and doing that, so. Thinking is the ultimate kind of resource. Yes. Okay, so um, what would be happening then? So by using the hats, 
um, allow us to have conversations that aren't just fully led by emotions, right? And another way that we're planning to facilitate that is by using a predetermined set of questions. We haven't created them yet because we wanted to come and speak with all of you first um, before we really delved into the creation of those different questions and we would create them based on who we were speaking to. So like the questions for parents to get them thinking and talking would be different than the questions we maybe put to staff or even to um, just general community members. Um, but those questions would all be designed to engage those stakeholders, understand kind of their view, like they were talking about the house, understand other people's perceptions and realities, recognize all their priorities, um, and just kind of get a vision of what everybody is thinking, feeling, where they would like to see things go or how they're envisioning things going so that we can collaborate together. Um, so other little tidbits here that um, we felt were important to share. The plan would be to conduct this over just the next couple of months and have it done um, fairly quickly um, before By December or something like that. Into 2024. Um, so that's kind of what we were thinking there. The data collection, so because this is part of our grad school work and because we would be presenting it as a passion project at the end of our um, program, we would be collecting data for ourselves. Um, just to put in our school presentation. So not necessarily data like, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, we're not like collecting data as in we're trying to get information. It's not like a survey or anything like that, but we have to personally collect data to put in our presentation for school. So like we might look at like the demographics, who shows up and how many people came per night and how they were feeling at the beginning versus how they were feeling at the end. We're not entirely sure what that's going to look like yet, but we wanted to be transparent and just say that we're going to be collecting data, but not for anything in particular. Also, that data collection doesn't need to include any personal mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. from them. It's just for our, just for our, our end of the year mm -hmm. presentation that we have to do explaining what we did for our passion project. Um, we're looking into doing multiple methods of invitation. So getting it out, how trying to brainstorm really creative ways to how we can get that out to the public and get the most buy and get the most people to attend these sessions so that we can really get a wide um, array of people and a wide base um, to get the most valuable information. And then the plan would be at the very end to come back and share with you some of the things that we found. We could also take that one step forward if there's any interest from the board and we could lead you through this process as well, given the information that we learn as our white hat, uh, as well as maybe uh, if it's helpful to you, the things that we looked at earlier tonight, if you do have your survey results and want to go through that in a, um, in a purposeful thinking manner, um, then we could do that too if there's any interest. Or, questions or for another topic just to go through the six sure yes yeah. um, it it was very interesting doing it and being allowed to put the red hat on do you and have all the hats on. like can i actually touch a hat that you're oh they look they had there hats, hats. Yes, there were hats and they just <laughs> there were there in were a hats. fish bowl where everyone's around the outside and then there were hats for the chairs and you got to sit in the open chair and practice that hat i wore a sombrero so it was very nice yeah. way far Any questions you have? You know, it's part of the reason when we were we um, <clears throat> usually get together and put together the agenda and the word collaboration just kept coming up because I just kept thinking what an amazing opportunity for us to collaborate, <laughs> right? With you guys, we are your own group of stakeholders, but it's another avenue to bring another stakeholders in, right? And so we it just that we kept saying collaboration, collaboration. What a golden opportunity it is, and I think um, not all graduate work aligns so nicely with shuttering and, and closing that gap of miscommunication or crevices that are there of misinformation. But I think this is one that, you know, I personally don't see a downside to collaborating with and helping you and helping us and our community is all the better for it. So yeah. What's your thoughts? What can we do to support you? Wonderful question. Um, at this stage, we haven't um, walked through all the specifics. We didn't want to get too far. I can go really far, really fast down the road if I would like to. So 
pump the brakes before we really talk to you and, and I don't know if you wanted to do it at all. Um, we do have a lot of framework idea and plans already. Um, and at this point, I'm not positive what you can do to support us. Uh, approving, that anyway. that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. uh, approving that we um, are, I'm, we're not doing it on behalf of the district, but we recognize that we're essentially okay. representing the district by doing this. Um, so that's, that's key. Uh, and otherwise, Becky has done a really wonderful job thus far of um, kind of walking us through and letting us know what the school, the school district can do to support us as well. And I think we are feeling um, pretty good about all those things. I'd be happy to come back later if I think of something. Are there any black hat thoughts <laughs> of skepticism or any things that you would be Coming up because that's what we want to know too. Mm -hmm. Anything that you'd be afraid of, that or, you see as a problem. And, or and you can and you, we can that can be emails or further discussions later. But we know, like she said, we're not representing the district, but we are part of the district, and this is we are with we will be a face um, out there. So we want to make sure we're honoring that. One, one piece going back to the black hat thought is that this is a referendum to get to the end of the gate. And it's not, that's not the end. That's not why they came forward. The, the, we talked about the greatness of Osceola and the pride that the majority of this community has for the school district. We don't always hear it, we don't always see it, but what do they want? What other things can we do better? And what matters to them in their hearts and their heads? Like that's the conversation and to have three people who work here that are growing their knowledge as leaders because this is a leadership program that they're in yeah. and wanting to give back to us is one of the greatest gifts you could ask for because they can all do passion projects that aren't this big. This is a heavy lift. Engaging community is a huge heavy lift and they recognize that. We talked about where. We talked about doing it in the library to make it in a more accessible place so people don't feel like they're being watched by the school district cameras. Like literally as we talked about some of those pieces, they're being very wise and intentional and want to bring something great from it mm -hmm. and that's that's really powerful and i appreciate that a lot that they're willing to step in we even that. said the finance and referendum language needs to be in a word in the questions well, not, like, yeah, but that's not the point at all the if goal. that if that comes out of conversation we have to be careful about what you know that i guess you know, possibly could come up that's not I keep replacing the because the sun is in my eyes, not because I'm scared of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anybody wondered, because I keep scooting back and I every time click off. So. <laughs> it's not intentional. Yeah, no. I'm just a big proponent of tying the community with the district. Mm -hmm. I think the most successful communities are really, they operate closely with the district and there's a level of trust there. And I know you guys kind of tiptoed around it, but there is a little level of distrust between the community and our district and so I'm a I'll do whatever I have to to help you guys out and just let us know and my I guess my first worry and I'm sure you navigate that is just there may be some um, strong emotions mm -hmm. that come out and I don't want you guys to have to take the brunt on anything that's actually like meant to be towards maybe us or other people yeah but i'm sure you know all about how to facilitate that and i don't so also part of our leadership yeah. needing to learn exactly how to learn well, how i to think do that's it. that's the point of like facilitating facilitating in that restorative circle is setting the guidelines right away yeah. and, and making sure there's expectation this isn't we're facilitating this conversation and nobody's going to get take over this conversation this is a circle for a reason we're all we're all here to collaborate on our community and making the school our pride. And of course, hitting that red hat. Um, the red hat is not uh, a time for discussion. It, it's time for everybody to be heard with all their emotions. Right. But I don't. We don't. We don't have to take it in or respond in this in this parallel thinking zone, which is again where I think it it offers a wonderful opportunity for the community to let it all out if they do have some of that distrust but also um, for us to move forward and, and understand them in a more productive way and gain some clarity beyond 
That was a nice. yellow hat after that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping you could maybe bring some healing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was the huge, the biggest thing to it is everyone being heard. And that was just, that was very powerful. And some, and I, 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 I went over some real tough top, uh, topics in the room, um, just as far as what to bring into an elementary classroom and honoring parents and their viewpoints. And it got heavy quick, but the honesty and working through that was very, very powerful. So, yeah, it was, it took a lot for me. Because you can pretend it's not there, but it's there. Right, right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Well, and that's why if sitting in the circles and going through these hats, you're allowed to think of it, think through it through this eye, look, think through it through this one, and it really is mm -hmm. powerful. And when you, it feels, it feels much more productive because you're not going around in random circles, you're going in a guided circle with mm -hmm. your thoughts, so. And I think how it's gonna be communicated maybe to the community that it's you guys working on your master's yeah, yes. um, mm -hmm. passion project and it's not necessarily like the school board chartered you with this. Yes. Okay. And that you, I mean, yes. that yes. I think you will, you're mm -hmm. gonna maybe get some different results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just like when you're communicating, make sure it's communicated that it's the three of you independent of all. Um, and it'll be interesting to see, hopefully maybe we'll be able to see your final presentation as you. Yeah. I think it's really neat. Like, it, I'm excited. Like, we are at it tonight. I also, my son participated in the Youth Summit with the Lions Star up at Polk County, mm -hmm. um, put on by the Health Department. He loved it. And so I'm really interested to see how you can bring this to the students so they can have all of these hats, whether they're in elementary school or in high school. So, excited. And that was a big piece. We talked about our community, but oftentimes we forget about the ones who are sitting in the chair that are hearing it right now yep. and what's important to them may be something very different than we would know if we were looking south. Yeah. It's a little bit of work. <laughs> so, but you can That's do That's why we are a team. Right? Right. But collaboration. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. If no further questions for that group, that brings us to item 11, which is the next meeting information. Uh, the next regular board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, August 28, 2024, at 6 30 p.m. in the district office conference room. Item 12 would be to entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, Dr. Martin. Okay. Oh, Schmidt, any further discussion? Just noting how you have a lot of things. Well, once I start doing it, I it's just keeps going so <laughs> all right all those in favor of adjourning say aye, aye. all those in favor say aye we are adjourned thank you everybody <laughs> thank you